Fasten your seatbelt. There might be some tablets. You've taken your chances, made your mistakes, and now a final triumph. And I've been looking for this all my life. Well, hi, everybody. It's me, Vito Giswaldi, your favorite host, here with my good friend Dick Masterson. What's up, everyone? The host of the biggest problem in the universe, a podcast that we do yeah. on the regular. Well, Dick, uh, I'm excited to have you joining me while we're here in your studio talking about an exciting new film from the Disney Corporation. Patreon.com slash Biggest Problem. Yes. There you go there to see our other show. <laughs> you should be watching Biggest Problem in the Universe. And if you're not a fan of that show, well, this will give you a little taste of it as we talk about the new Indiana Jones film, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, which we have just seen at an exclusive Thursday night preview screening. And we have purposefully not discussed the film ahead of time. That was Dick, hard for you. It was hard for me. I could tell me. when we walked out of the theater, you're like, and then it. There's a lot to say. Well, then it's. There's a lot to say about the last Indiana Jones film. Real quick. Please, God. Let me uh, refresh your memory of what this film was. Here is the official press release for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Harrison Ford returns to the role of the legendary hero archaeologist for this fifth installment of the iconic franchise. Alongside oh, Ford God. is Phoebe Waller-Bridge, Antonio Banderas, Toby Jones, Boyd Holbrook, all over... Okay, a million people are in this movie. Directed by James Mangold, known for Le Mans 66 and Logan. Yeah. The film is produced by Kathleen Kennedy, Frank Marshall, Simon Emanuel, with Steven Spielberg and George Lucas as executive producers. John William returns to again compose the score. Well, all the John big Williams. hitters are here. John Williams is He's here. He's just cutting and pasting all of his... All of Classic, his compositions, iconic. Though. Well, I don't know what's... You, I'm you hear, a huge Indiana Jones fan. Yeah. Like, the jacket, the hat, the loser, everything. Yeah. So I could identify those All the All the musical scores. beats were there already. Nothing yeah. new hit you. That was all just copy-paste. Well, he's got to, like, choose where to put it, right? You would get a copyright strike on YouTube. <laughs> if, that, if he tried to pass that off as a new score on YouTube... You would get immediately struck. I gotta say, it is it is an iconic theme. I couldn't stop myself from humming that. Classic. Too many do 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 do. There's a lot of do 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 do. <laughs> Too many. That theme that in three notes you're gonna recognize. He just has that signature. About halfway through, I said, "That's the last." That was one too many do 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 do's, and there was still so many more. Yeah, I think Left. the film really keeps hitting you with them. Because they want you to feel, again, this is the end of the iconic Indiana Jones franchise. I don't think there's any way that you get Well, but Harrison three Ford was supposed to be there. the end. And then four was supposed to be the end. Yeah. And then five. That was one too many. Five is now the official end, five which is too, too many. Too, too many. <laughs> Did you think you would be meeting... No, I didn't. Okay, guys, I have to say, there will be spoilers. We're now getting you would right think that's a joke. <laughs> this will be a spoiler-filled review. Let's put this in perspective. So okay. this is, Lucasfilm has kind of been on a downward slope. The Willow TV show's been canceled. Star Wars is not doing as well as they had hoped. Ever since the X-Wing fighter video game, mm -hmm. Lucasfilm, LucasArts has been on a down, yeah, it's been on downward a, spiral. Since X-Men vs. TIE Fighter. Yeah, or the one on the GameCube that was also Rogue computer. Squadron. Yeah, they've been uh, they've been on a slippery slope, but this is Kathleen Kennedy trying to cement her legacy by giving the fans a big Indiana Jones film. Now, I don't know if you heard this, but this film actually screened at the Cannes Film Festival. Oh, really? Fa yes. Why? Because that's how confident Lucasfilm and Kathleen Kennedy were in this movie. <laughs> They really were like, this is, we've created a work of art here, people. Like, this is the end of Indiana Jones. It's a fantastic adventure. Man. But uh, the reviews got have close. not been that. They got, they got close. They got I, close. So they, I was I was primed, sorry, I was primed to go in thinking it would be a shit pile because of all the reviews and all right. the guys who, like, just make money by compulsively shitting on things. Yes. It, they got close to making a good movie. There was I think. there I was think. the bones of something there. I definitely it was not as much. 
you know, a lot of people, the way they're talking about it is they're like, oh, it's going to be a complete train wreck, whatever. I'm like, no, there is some Indiana Jones there. Like, you feel... A train wrecked literally and metaphorically in that movie. <laughs> yeah. But I wouldn't call it a train wreck. No. If anything, it just felt mostly forgettable, I, I would say, is my critique of this film. How can you forget? <laughs> How can you forget a, Me meeting Archimedes? a Nazi yeah. screaming at what are Phrygian soldiers in the year <laughs> 2 BC and shooting them with a machine gun for no reason? For no How reason. could you forget Which that? Which I was laughing you know? in the theater. I'm you like, were laughing in great. the theater. Yeah. There's stuff to like. Uh, but I think at the end of it, it does feel almost like, like it lacks the gravitas that maybe I was expecting from the final Indiana Jones. But in a way, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's better that it's just kind of like, ah, he went on one last adventure. It didn't really have. No, that's what you say about a know. video game. Yeah, It felt like a video game. Every time yeah. they stray away from like, this is something that Jesus touched. <laughs> it starts to feel like a Tomb Raider game or like a yeah. made for Game Boy Indiana Jones. It felt like game. one of the Lucasfilm adventure games. They have Indiana Jones video games. Yeah, I've played them. Yeah. They're fun. And the, you feel like the plot was something out of one of those? I feel like the ma the everything about it was a, a video game that I was watching. Yeah. Um starting with the entire introduction scene. The, like the usually Indiana Jones starts with like a Indiana Jones recovering something as like a fun little mini right so starts with a mini adventure right so they chose to start at the fall of at the end of World War II right it's the fall of Berlin yeah the Nazis are rushing to get their artifacts out of some crumbling castle so Indiana Jones and his buddy are trying to get the Spear of Destiny yes before the Nazis the spear get spear that killed Jesus they're trying to rescue it. From the Nazis. And even then, it felt like a video game. Like, he, there's just everyone, there's so much gunfire that does <laughs> nothing, and he's not even, like, ducking. Yeah. He's doing a motorcycle onto a train, but there's kind of not really, there's no sense that he's going to miss. There's some action in this film that feels like it has no weight to it, where you're like, yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. It, beca it became very cartoonish. Right away. Yeah. Where he's getting hung in a noose. And he's like literally escaping the hangman's noose. Yeah. But he gets hung. Like your neck breaks when you get hung. You don't just suffocate. <laughs> so. Well, he freed his hands so he could get his hands underneath the rope and stop himself from choking. Yeah, but that your neck's still going to break. You, you might. Yeah. I mean, he got lucky there, but then immediately okay. a bomb crashes in and then the bomb gets wrapped around the rope and he gets pulled down with the bomb. Yeah. And then he has to hijack. No, then he hijacks a car, which he then jumps from the car onto a motorcycle. And the motorcycle crashes and stuff, so he can get on the train. And the tra look, it's all exciting and fun, but it was at, at, at some points when the odds are so stacked against the character that you're like, well, he would just be dead at this point. Like it's it becomes yeah. hard to suspend your disbelief. Like Indiana Jones one, I don't remember if there's anything where where you as a viewer think, oh, there's there's no way I could do that. Like everything's right. kind of even when he slides under, they show every part of the process, and a real guy did that. So at, at all times, you're thinking as a man, like I could do that. Right, I could do that. Like I, I you know, I, there's a chance I could do that. But in, in <laughs> but in this movie, right away, it's like, well, I could never do any of this. This it's, seems like a problem in a lot of Hollywood is that we've pushed at these action scenes to the point of excess where they're so ridiculous and outlandish that yeah. you kind of lose connection with the character. Yeah. Another big action set piece was that big car chase through, what was that, Marrakesh or something or whatever? Uh, it started with a T. They said it like six times. Well, they didn't get Timbuktu, it. who knows? All yeah. I know is it went on way too long, and the entire time I'm going... Why are all the streets clear? They've been they've been literally driving through a crowded marketplace for like a ten minute sequence, and somehow nobody ever gets in front of the car, or they run through something, or occasionally They're stealing a lot of cars in this movie too. <laughs> yeah, I remember when they stole the wedding car. You, I saw you go. What the? <laughs> I, it's like yeah, there was no. They, well, didn't, they didn't need the scene where they drive off with a car. Like in Indiana yeah. Jones 3 when the guy's fixing his flat tire and it just drives away. They, they didn't need that scene so many times right. in the new movie. Well, so let's real quick give the basic bones of what the story is. Okay, the story yeah. is that Indiana Jones, he's, an old, he's about to retire. We see his retirement party at whatever college he's working at. He's an old man, and it does this thing 
that I don't understand, but it seems to be a part of... Again, it's interesting that this is from the guy who directed Logan. Did you see Logan? Logan was great. Right. I loved it. And Logan was a good movie, and I think it fits a lot more for a character like Wolverine to have this story of he's at the end of his life and everything's gone horribly wrong. And you're like, yeah, well, he's always been a troubled you know, character. He's always yeah. had these problems. It makes sense that he's arrived at the shittiest His possible place. His world is very violent. Right. In the last Indiana Jones movie, he was friends with monkeys and he got married and he had a kid. <laughs> and then you cut to the next one and he's divorced. And he's, I, I really disagree with, why is his kid dead? I know Shia LaBeouf is a piece of shit, apparently. And so they had, they felt the need to like remove him from the Indiana Jones franchise. Okay, we but gotta, we gotta Jones get really to there. To we gotta get to kid? there. I, what you're saying is what you started to say, and I, I, I thought at the time, I think I wrote it down. I kept notes. Yeah. Even though you did not, I, I did not. I also it's have an issue here, with the popcorn that I'm gonna bring up at the end of the show. Did I fuck up the popcorn? We're gonna let the audience decide. <laughs> We're gonna let the audience decide if the. If I got half of the popcorn that I bought. <laughs> okay. Honestly, <laughs> as we were eating the popcorn, we'll get to that later. I felt When I ran out <laughs> I felt, in the first five yeah. minutes and Vito is saving his for later, I thought, well, I mean, I guess <laughs> if we're going to say that you eat less than me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about the popcorn. I honestly went, oh, shit, did I split it up badly because Dick I is now out? I took pictures because when you gave it to me, I thought, oh, you fucker. You fucked me so hard I, I really popcorn. didn't mean to. <laughs> I took pictures. I owe you um, the, on the next popcorn. So, so Indiana Jones is retiring. Oh, an, an IOU doesn't put the popcorn in my I mouth. I will Vito. make you pop. <laughs> All right, I fucked up the popcorn splitting. Wait, wait, wait. What you were saying was it starts out with, with Indiana, Jones Indiana Jones at the lowest bad, point in his life, but he should be like the greatest archaeologist in the world. Right. He should have tenure. He should live in a giant house. He like, should be known as this guy who's saved all these artifacts and put them in yeah. museums or something. Who recovered the Holy Grail, the Ark right. of the Covenant, and presumably much more, and is a celebrated war veteran and hero. Right. I guess you can say that he purposefully <laughs> avoided <laughs> the spotlight, but regardless, it's clear that this is a man who made friends all around the world and went on incredible. Like, that's the thing is he's going back and visiting all his old friends. I'm like, well, why is he living like a shitty bachelor in like a crummy rundown apartment? He should why have he money at least. He should have some money. He yeah, he's Marcus not just paid him a shitload of money for all the stuff that he stole. Yeah. And was, that was made clear. Even if he's getting stuff from museums, the museums are going to pay him a large finder's fee. Yeah. And uh, he could live not in some shitty, run-down apartment. Where he, li he lives next to a flop house where he, the first uh, the, the first thing we see of, Ma of, of Indiana Jones today, the old man, is him waking up his neighbor with a baseball bat because the music is too loud. Right. <laughs> with a bat, which is... <laughs> Very aggressive. <laughs> yeah, he's not a for good an neighbor. old man. Um, and they also get they sh start with a shirtless scene of him, right? Where he's like, he's very old and obviously CG'd muscles. Is that what you thought that was? I wasn't. sure. Yeah, it must be. Harrison Ford's not. He's in, not on testosterone. No. He looks like RFK doing like <laughs> incline yeah. bench. Like that's our first shot of him as a modern man. It's <laughs> very weird. He looks like an orangutan. He looked he looked like a uh, a mix of RFK and Jeremy Clarkson. I thought it was very brave to show us an old man with a uh, show his wrinkly weird skin or whatever. You're saying it was CGI, and I'm not sure. Yes. Yeah. It's definitely I mean, CGI. he definitely looked uh, to be in good shape, but I assume Harrison Ford's not hitting the gym these days. Uh, so here's so uh, Indiana Jones at the lowest point in his life, and at this point, he is visited by his niece, who's the ca the character's no, name. No, goddaughter. I'm retiring. Well, in that case, what are we drinking? Same for the goddaughter. Helena Shaw. Helena, whose father was a former compatriot of Indiana Jones, who actually is in that Nazi train sequence, yeah. and became obsessed with an item known as the Arkham Mukachu, whatever. It is the, the Arkham Dial of Destiny. A dial that could change the course of history. Why are you chasing the thing that drove your father crazy? They never call it the Dial of Destiny. They don't call do it the they? Dial of Destiny, no. Okay. Well, I'm trying to think of all the Indiana Jones. I guess all the other Indiana Jones films are really in the search for the what's the what's the Ark one? In the Ark of the Covenant. Yes, yeah, so they yeah. just call it that. No, they call it Raiders of the Lost Ark. Raiders of the Lost Sea, so it's not called Lost the Lost Ark. Ark in the movie. Okay. There you go. Fine. Dial uh, Destiny. Uh, the fine, Dial, fine, fine, Dial fine. Destiny is a dumb name. 
The Dial of Destiny is some strange mathematic uh, device made by Archimedes that we later determine can find time portals. I kind of like that. No, it's cool. So I, I think it's a good device. I thought it would be device. dumb if it like made time portals appear. That's what I was worried about. I'm like, did Archimedes make a time travel device? <laughs> That's for, like stupid. <laughs> But when it was like, no, but it can use math okay. to figure out where rifts in time are opening. So if you're there at that exact point in time, you could fly into the sky and go through one. I'm like, yeah, that's OK. That's, that's fine. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it seemed like a video game item. Yeah. Well, like you, it seems like an AI could come up with about 20. Honestly, like, if we went to chat GPT like right now, we said, can you come up with some mystical artifacts for Indiana Jones yeah. to find? That like would the probably... joke of Aristophanes <laughs> is a joke so funny that you would die laughing. It's Ptolemy's magic stick that, uh, yeah, it's all stuff like that. Pythagoras' so... ultimate right angle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this woman, Helena Shaw, is trying to locate the Dial of Destiny Claiming mm. that, you know, she wants to honor her father. What we actually find out is she's a bit of a weird spy, uh, thief. She's like, uh, she goes she's around. She's like Indiana Jones. She's like Indiana Jones, like the but original. for profit. She's selling the items to the highest possible Well, no, bidder. no, no, no. Um, uh, see, I thought that too. But then in Indiana Jones 2, he was that. Was Remember, he? he was selling the remains of Nurhachi mm. to the mob. So yeah. he, I think there's enough, like, to say that she started in the same spot. And then remember, she also said that she wanted that to be, like, her dissertation sp uh, right. piece. So she was going to use that to become a... She wanted to become a famous... There's enough to... There's I think a, there's it's enough... It's mixed. It's so muddled. She's like but him. yes, it, I mean, at one point he says, you know, if you really... If someone who's trying to get rich off this thing does not memorize their dad's journal about it, proving yeah. that she does actually want to find it, and she does want to kind of... I guess pay tribute to her father who was obsessed with this thing by finally finding both halves. That's the thing. There's two halves of this device. Yeah, yeah. Indiana Jones has been holding on to one of them. Now they have to find the other half. And yeah. of course, the Nazis want it as well. The plot was great, honestly. It's a great setup. Yeah. It's yeah. a good setup. And they're gonna go back in time and kill Hitler to, to replace become, him yeah. and do all his mistakes. Mads which... Mikkelsen is the chief Nazi operative, whatever guy. He's a rocket scientist. Yeah, and uh, he is obsessed with replace. He wants to go back in time and replace and do it, Hitler. right? Yeah, and, he and do it. And correctly. honestly, yeah, you're like, wow, well, that would be pretty smart if you went back and just took his place and did everything right, and you know, didn't start a land world war in Russia. It's You'd a bit like I don't know. I, w I don't want to call it quantum leapy, but like the plan is kind of. Uh, it seems like it would fail on its own. Yeah, like if you let him go back and kill Hitler, like, well, how can you? How can you replicate everything? Like, you're kind of yeah. rooting for Hitler in that moment. You're like, well, I mean, I'm sure Hitler had a little je ne sais quoi that you can't replicate. You know, you're kind of a spaz, right? I was. I was. Seems like you could just let him do it. Like, okay, give it a shot, jackass. Yeah. Like, let's see how well you do. I did want them to elaborate more on the plan. I'm like, well, how are you going to convince everybody who loves Hitler to, you know, love you instead? Do you have yeah. some sort of... No, you Are don't. you going to disguise yourself as Hitler? Like, what, what exactly? The plan could have been more simple. Yeah. Like, because Indiana Jones says, like, what, are you going to go back and kill Churchill or uh, Eisenhower? Yeah, you're going to kill he Ike. Like, no, I'm going to do this one thing that's going to fix it. Not like, well, I'm going to wear Hitler a suit like <laughs> Buffalo Bill <laughs> right. and do everything right. Like, I don't know, man. I like the idea of a guy, though, who just goes, man, if I was, if I was Hitler, I would have done a way better job. That is the ultimate Nazi, right? Yeah, right? The, yeah. The, the ultimate Nazi is the one who not only looks at Hitler, but goes, man, I would have went even farther than Hitler. You're like, okay. For a second, I thought they were going to do what I joked about, which is oh, I'm going to stop it because it fucks, it screws up Germany. Yeah. Like, it, <laughs> <laughs> In which case, you're like, well, that's kind of a good thing. Yeah, which I joked about yeah. on our show. Well, uh, this becomes a madcap dash around the world to try and get both halves of this Special machine that can find time portals. Okay, so first of all, um, yeah. Indiana Jones is an alcoholic for some reason now. Was that not a trait in prior movies? I guess not. No, he never drank. Yeah, I don't movies. remember really. He always of that. had a head of his wits about him. Uh, I loved the the age regression in the beginning of the movie on Harrison Ford. Yeah, the uh, digital de aging. That was amazing. It was really good. But paired with his voice was. Weird and uncanny. It's still old man uh, Harrison Ford voice. Old man and depressed. <laughs> no, like this guy's yeah. never going to crack a wisecrack. Uh, Clint Eastwood in Grand Torino cracks more wisecracks than Harrison Ford does. 
Yeah. And he has no right to be that miserable in both real life and in the movie universe. I'll say one thing that was really missing from this movie, and maybe it's part of why the, the complete spark wasn't there, is that Indy never really gets, does he get like any real good quips in? There's a couple attempts. There's the part on the train where he, he drives a horse through the train tunnel, rides a horse through the train oh, yeah. tunnel, and he gets on the subway, and he turns the lady next to him, and he goes, faster. subway's faster. And I'm like, oh, that wasn't That was funny. like a <laughs> no ticket line, right? Yeah. Uh, there's no, yeah, this movie was. In it, was an, a, it was a video game. In an era where every movie is full of, like, quips and jokes, maybe it's it's better that this movie was focusing more on the action, but I still felt like it was missing well, some of that Well, but the bad guys humor. had tons of quips. When the mm. when the guys that giant guy showed up with that Texas guy yeah. who's just like immediately murdered a bunch of <laughs> professors They're at right. the college that was weird. Yeah, honestly, the I secretary walks uh, in and he just shoots her, and then the woman work the black like uh, CIA Foxy agent? Brown, yeah, dumb whatever, who's working right. for the CIA doesn't do anything about it. That was very. There were, yeah. There's a lot of jarring moments that involved murder and violence. Yeah, I was surprised by. I don't remember the Indiana Jones films like having characters just dying all the time. Am I like misremembering this franchise? No, no. Or, yeah, this was like much more violent. It, uh, in the in the original three, Indiana Jones would murder you, but only if you fucked with him. Only if you messed with him. If well, you, you mess with him first, I don't remember, he'll yeah. kill you. I don't remember seeing like bystanders getting killed in the Indiana Jones movies. You no. Know? I don't remember, like, in this movie, just, like, a lady walks in. She's like, oh, what are you guys doing in that office? <laughs> Bam! And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. my God. And that, at that point, you don't know if they're in the CIA yet. Right. But then you think, okay, well, then they must be bad guys, except the woman that I think is working for the CIA didn't stop him. Or so report him afterwards and be like, I guess what is supposed to happen is that, for some reason, this Nazi guy, he is a scientist working for the the U.S., so he's important. Operation Paperclip, right? He's yeah. he and he's in charge of building the rockets that which brought I, us which to was the cool. moon. I thought that was cool. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, uh, but for some reason, because he's an important U.S. scientist, that the CIA is helping him retrieve this stupid artifact. I guess is like a favor. Like, listen, yeah, I'll build, I didn't get that. I'll build a rocket to space, but you have to help me find this stupid thing. And, and for you some have to reason, let my yeah. guys help me. Yeah, you have to let my weird Nazi friends be on the mission with me. Who are like proud boys? Like, did you get that? <laughs> I, a little bit. Yeah. I started rooting for them because I'm like, man, honestly, this whole fucking replace this whole replace <laughs> Hitler plan is so goofy. I want to see it. I want to see the madcap adventures yeah. you get into trying to replace Hitler because I don't think you can do it. I will say honestly, I think one of the parts of the movie that I was disappointed in is I wanted more backstory for the goons. Because yeah. they play a really important part. Like, they're killing people, and they're, like, causing trouble. Very wi- in a parade in the yeah. middle of New York City, Literally they're a par- shooting yeah. people. I'm like, that guy's fucking crazy. What's his deal? And I, they never explained, like... <laughs> and they're super into being yeah. Nazis. Well, th- but they don't explain that. If there was a scene where he's just like, first of all, wouldn't that guy be too young to be a Nazi? Like, how did he find out about Nazis? It was in the 70s, right? It yeah. It was, like, 70. 70- was it 69? No, 69, because they just landed on the moon. Yeah, but he was like a 30-year-old so kid, so he wouldn't have been born during World War II, or, or maybe he was born right at the tail of the war. But I, I didn't even know, was he German, the henchman? Yeah, well, they had very good accents. Yeah. Okay, here's something else but he, I don't no, know. No, he was studying a German, but remember he was reading a book of German in the, he was studying up on German in <laughs> the room? That was a ploy. <laughs> I do I remember think, that. I think he was like an American who like just so really- He was a proud boy. He was like a neo-Nazi. <laughs> Which is actually really interesting, but they don't really explain it. Like, I want to know, like, oh, okay, yeah, are yeah, neo-Nazis yeah. helping actual Nazis, and they're going to go back in time, and what is happening? There wasn't a moment of, there wasn't a moment of a big reveal where Mads Mikkelsen shows his little army that he's got the time traveling device. Yeah, they just his army just kind of shows up. They're just on the plane. <laughs> and for no reason they have to go on a plane. But then it's also unclear why Archimedes would have a time portal that directs you to go into the sky. I think that's just where time portals happen. I, I think the idea is that... Yeah. I, okay, I think what you might have missed is in the notes of the professor, the one who's the father of uh, Helena Shaw or whatever, Yeah. he had certain dates linked remember it said 1939 i remember that so i think the way it works is that when time portals open 
you have to go into the, like if you go into a time portal on this date in 1980, it takes you back. It will go you back day. exact 40. Yeah, it's like a 40 year skip. Yeah, so, I got that. But okay, then, but then it's it's up it's in, in the, the sky. Air. What do you want to know? Well, that's just where well, time portals not a very, are. So then, what did what did Archimedes go like? Well, shit. Now I got to invent a airplane. Yeah, I think so. I think he built the thing that knew where time so portals Leonardo were. Leonardo da Vinci then invented it. Uh, some uh, somebody. Yeah, he his next step was to build winged flying machines, and he didn't get to that point. Um. So okay, the old man voice mm-hmm. was weird in the young. They should have had just a, an impersonator or an AI voice. Yeah, I mean they're getting yeah, that either technology one. pretty good. <laughs> and then they can just wipe out yeah. these last two movies and start over back <laughs> in good old nineteen forty one. I don't know what's going to happen with this de aging technology because you can now just place any actor in there and replace the face. Yeah, it was. I don't know. What did you think of it? I thought it was perfect. I, the not, Robert De Niro perfect, stuff was, looks horrible, but, but this one looked great. This this was definitely the best it's ever been. Uh, as somebody pointed out, hey, it's pretty useful to have a scene at night in the rain because then you can do that digital de aging, oh, and yeah. if you fuck it up, it's well, like, well, at least it's covered in a bunch of effects. Here. <laughs> but even in scenes where it was just like him in a chair, uh, maybe you know the shadows and the lighting help a lot, but no, it really did work, and I. Uh, I wonder if they're going to use that. I mean, we saw the digital de-aging with Luke Skywalker, and that was pretty good, too. Yeah. From, uh, <clears throat> from what do you call it, the Mandalorian. Okay, so he, he's trying to get the dial. He hooks back up. He finds Helena Shaw, who's trying to pawn it off. And he goes, hey, stop trying to pawn that thing. Then there's a big dumb chase with the Nazis and also her former fiancé, who's some sort of ruthless crime boss. Uh, that was I- funny. I, I think that's fine. I think that's in line with uh, Howard, or uh, what do you call it, the Indiana Jones kind of wackiness of that universe. I just felt like that chase scene went on way too long. I was like, oh, my God. This movie is like two and a half hours long, and it really felt like it did not. Some of these action scenes could have been cut yeah, down a little bit. Uh, yeah. There was way too much, uh, you need me because I need you, and you're, like, there was way too much justification for why they had to stay together as a team instead yeah. of just finding a common purpose in the beginning and going with it. Right. They had, like, every time there was a handoff, it was, like, an argument and some kind of lame negotiation about why. Why? Okay, well, Indiana Jones, we're leaving without you. Know you know this type of code. Yeah, I know, I know this, this type of code. I've got this. And if and you I'm don't be there. Yeah. Like, yeah, man, just, like, say you love her. <laughs> like, say you weren't there for her like yeah you're her godfather and she says that but then they just drop it yeah what's interesting is that there's never really any resolution between those two characters is that they just kind of team up but there's no like oh you should have stuck around and helped it feels like this movie she says that but it feels like this movie's really missing the big emotional moment of like you should have listened to my dad and I've always hated you and like yeah. you know you abandoned us and my dad went crazy or something like that. They don't yeah. really ever have that. It's really just <laughs> and I'll tell like, you, you know. the train wreck. One of the two train wrecks in the movie is uh, when Indiana Jones insists on staying in the year zero after traveling through time. He <laughs> says. I'm not going back with you. She clearly needs like a father figure like right. him. And he, he defiantly says, no, I'm staying here for no other reason than to avoid his emotions. And then instead of convincing him or him having to save her and bringing her back to the present, yeah. she punches him out cartoonishly, <laughs> which you cannot do to an 80-year-old man. And he wakes up in the present. So Indiana Jones abandons his daughter. Kind of, yeah. Back in time. He's prepared to abandon her. He, Yeah, he. that's the choice that he makes. Yeah. And then she knocks him out and, oh, like, that's a very bad <laughs> character. Moral. That's a very bad dad. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, goddaughter, but technically, I mean, if you're making this film- It's presented as She though, has no father figure left. Yeah. Clearly, she kind of looks up to him in some way. I mean, she's being- The emotion that she's having in that she's scene- She's following his footsteps exactly. Yeah. She's 100%. like a treasure hunter, and she wants to be a legit and he's like, no, leave me to die in the past. And she's like, motherfucker, no. I'm like, taking no, you back I, to the future because- You should know this. <laughs> you should know that I need a father figure. Yeah. You're an old man. What? Do you not have any it's wisdom? It's weird that th- they didn't overplay that. Yeah, like, it seems like a very obvious story beat that, like, should have- Happened right away. Yeah, happened right away. I-, I Whenever you came over, I was always enamored with you and the idea of this brave archaeologist, Indiana Jones, you inspired me, and look at what you've become. 
it, yeah. 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 Like it when, was missing that beat. In the first movie, Marion says, when Marion gets a bar burned down, because mm-hmm. the Nazis come to kill Indiana Jones. Or no, they the Nazis come to take the uh, headpiece for the staff of Rock right. from Marion. Indiana Jones defends her, and he's and she says, well, now I lost everything, uh, but you have to take me with you. Yeah. That's the only negotiating those two ever did. And then it, they obviously have feelings for each other, but then through the movie, they it, it becomes saving her, right? You're right. And then he sacrifices the Ark of the Covenant to save her. Like it's that's no the longer, end of the arc, yeah. right? That arc did not exist in this movie, and it should have. I think that's every Indiana Jones movie is that it starts off as a quest for a mystical artifact, but then at the end of it, it becomes a quest to save the people around you who you love, and it was never about the artifact at all. But then Indy goes, but I, I want to stay in the, the first past. one, the difference is he <laughs> doesn't blow, like he could shoot them and yeah. have the arc and have it, and he chooses her over the arc when he puts the rocket launcher down, yeah. right? I don't just a slightly well, he also different. chooses. He doesn't want to blow up the ark. Was a big part of it. He's like, "Oh, was that it?" Yeah, he goes. It's like you're going to be blowing up history. You're blowing up, and he's like, "Ah, oh, you're right." Oh, okay, right. yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it is interesting that it seemed maybe it just felt too obvious to the to the writer. Like, ah, they know we're going to do that, so instead. Let's not have them have like any sort of interesting emotional connection. I want him. I want Indiana Jones to act like a dad for like yeah. if he's got a fuck, if he's got a daughter. If he's there. gonna talk to her lovingly and use her childhood pet name Wombat or whatever else, I'm like you kind of got to sell that a little harder. Yeah. Uh, there is a kid along for the adventure. Uh, what was the kid's name? Timmy, Bimmy, Jimmy, Tyrese, Tyrese, know, Tyrone's is. there. Little uh, child adds some fla- some short round flavor to the soup. I think I thought he was he served a purpose. I didn't yeah, fall I, in love with him, but he's okay. He was there. He was okay. Yeah. All right. So there's the big chase. Then following the big chase, the underwater scene. The underwater. We get to the boat. He has an old diver friend. Who's and there are t- eels. There's eels, which are kind of like funny. snakes. Yeah, yeah. I think I get that joke. That's good. That's funny. The kid really has to send it home. He goes, they look like snakes. That was maybe Indiana Jones, the one joke that I was like, ah, that's, that's pretty good. Where Indiana Jones yeah. looks at the kid, he's like, no, they don't. <laughs> they don't look like snakes at all. Did you notice that they had to say every joke and every beat once and then hit it a second time in like a dumb way? They kind of did, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Like, really? The kid could have just said they look like snakes, but said Indiana had to gone go, like, no! <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought wrote, that underwater yeah, scene, though, was, uh, it felt pretty bad. It, it was like, first of all, I think anytime you do an underwater scene, I'm like, well, Indiana Jones is all about fun, you know, dialogue and talking as he's going. If he's underwater, he can't say anything. So it's just them, like, stumbling through the dark to try and find a it's treasure also chest. also, like, 300 feet under underwater? Yeah. I didn't know you could just do that. I'm pretty sure you can't just go, like, when right. your ears blow in or well, something. Well, when the, guy's, the guy goes, he specifically says, I have a special way to prevent the bends. The bends is when uh, bubbles of gas build up in your blood from being pressurized too long. Yeah. And he's like, we, just, we can only be down there for three minutes, and then we got to come up really fast. And I'm yeah. like... I think that's actually the opposite of what you're supposed to. The whole thing with the bends is that you have to pull people out of the water really slowly so that their their blood the can oxygen, adjust yeah. to the oxygen. Instead, it's like, no, just go quick. Okay, but here's so here's a, they did try to explain it though. Yeah, they did, but they didn't need to. Here's a here's a problem that plagues the whole movie, and it's 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 indicated right there. Like this is a great example. So in the first Indiana Jones, when he finds that the true position of the map room or yeah. the true resting spot of the Ark of the Covenant is not where the Nazis are digging, Sala's crew goes and digs in secret at night to get in there, yeah. right? Yeah. And you just kind of see a shot of Indiana Jones putting the hat on, showing that some guys are doing something and it's being taken care of, right? Sneaky time, yeah. In this movie, they could have easily just had the divers go down and do a similar thing. Like, we found a spot is the diver's going to go down and take it out. But they wanted to have this dumb eel scene. They wanted to have, like, this <laughs> yeah. pointless fight where Indiana Jones is fighting, fighting at eels, eels, which don't behave like that. No. Like, wild animals don't – they're not piranha. They don't swarm you and attack you. They just run away. Right. But they wanted to have this dumb fight scene, so they have to send everybody down there. Yeah, Indy, w- the previous snake things, I don't remember him ever having to punch out a bunch of snakes, <laughs> you know? It was just kind of like, yeah, there's snakes and he doesn't like them, and that was the end of it. Uh, that yeah. that whole scene, again, 
It's like a little bit of excess where I'm going, why do you need this movie to be two and a half hours? You're right. The it whole, doesn't need to be a fight in underwater. Yeah. The whole we're diving underneath to get the thing. It's like, well, yeah, just bring it up. Just, just yeah. make Antonio Banderas do it like while you're resting and talking. Yeah. Hey, look, we got the thing. And then pull it up. No, nice. it has to be Indy goes under the water and he's, he's, right, he's right. punching a bunch of eels. And I'm like, this is fucking stupid. I'm going to tie, this, <laughs> I'm gonna tie these eels' tails in a knot. <laughs> and then I'm going to use them to whip the other. He should have used an eel like a whip. I'm surprised they didn't. I'm surprised they didn't do that, there. too. As they are retreat. Well, I guess he had to go under the water because that's when the Nazis storm the boat, take it over. And then using the plates, which were found underground, they can now find the location of the second dial. Uh, Indy and yes. his friends managed to escape from the Nazis mm -hmm. and uh, have given them. Well, I actually thought it was. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. You've skipped over the part where he says his son died in Vietnam. Yeah. Which was another train wreck. And I said, I really, what? I really don't like that. Okay. So in Indiana four, Jones 4. He didn't go save him from Vietnam? <laughs> <laughs> With a special, like, South Pacific, don't, you yeah, know. That would have been a good Indiana he didn't Jones. He the OSS to put his son in, like, a safe. Like, he worked for the. The CIA. Yeah. The, uh, anyway, go ahead. His son could have been in a POW camp with uh, John McCain. That would have been interesting. <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, I really disagree with... Here's the thing. I know that people don't like the Mutt Williams character or whatever it is. Horrible. from Yeah, from yeah. Indiana Jones 4. They don't like Shia LaBeouf, fine. But there's no mean... This, this feels like one of those decisions that is made related... To, not... Not crucial to the movie itself. Yeah. He could have just lost contact with his son, just been like, oh, my son hates me, or, you know, I haven't talked to him in a while. Instead, it's, no, my son's dead. And I'm like, why do we have to keep doing We did the same thing with Harrison uh, Ford in the Star Wars movies, where you're like, oh, Han Solo, I bet he went on to all sorts of fun adventures. No. It's like, no, my marriage fell apart, and my kid, and that one, his kid kills him, which is, I don't know if that's better or worse than his kid just being, his kid is basically dead in the Star Wars movies, because he's now he's Kylo Ren or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, why does it have to be the most depressing situ possible situation for this guy? That his kid died and it destroyed his marriage and now he's living alone. That was another line that cracked me up. It, he it said, was not well. She goes, good uh, dialogue. Shaw, Wombat yeah. says, what would you tell your son? And he goes, I'd tell him that he's going to die in Vietnam <laughs> and, and and that it would mess up my marriage. <laughs> I was like, well. I think the kid's going to be more concerned with the first part. Do you blame? I was thinking, well, do you blame your son's death for your marriage falling apart? Because that's probably why your marriage fell apart. Yeah. And I think we do learn that is why his marriage fell apart. That uh, he did not take, he and his wife did not take the death of Mutt very well. But then, but there's so much to unpack there. Like, okay, then what, what about it is why you guys got I just, divorced? How is it fun to, okay, here's the thing. It's fun to have a divorce. Well, in the Indiana other, Jones movie. that's the thing. The other movies exist. Like, people can go back and watch Indiana Jones 4. So now when you're watching Indiana Jones 4 and Shia LaBeouf's like, oh man, I'm with my dad on an adventure, you go, Dead. that kid's going to die in Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. That's way less, That may, even if you hate that movie, that makes the movie infinitely worse like now. Like when his dad to is go, dead. The, that character is now like almost pointless. <laughs> that the fourth movie was all about, oh, you know, he's going to become an adventure like his dad. No, he's going to die off screen to serve like a meaningless emotional beat. In a for, the the, ba the a behind footnote. guy in the Forrest Gump when he's carrying Bubba <laughs> yeah. out of the thing. <laughs> he's going to be a footnote in the fifth one. And you're like, well, okay. Couldn't, wouldn't it have been nicer for him, to Indiana Jones, to explain to Marion that he's got to go help this girl that he kind of abandoned? Yeah. You know? Because there's no reason why he's not like a love interest to anybody. There's no reason why it had to be a divorce. Or, well, what happens in the movie is that because of the parade uh, kerfuffle, he gets framed for killing all the people in his oh, old yeah. workplace and I think killing some people during the parade. So he already has an excuse to not be there with Marion. He could be like, okay, Marion, I'm going to work. Oh, shit, I've been framed for murder and I have to flee the country. Like, I don't that think Indiana Jones ever needs to be framed for murder. <laughs> Well, in this movie, he needed to. Yeah. And that was actually a plot beat that they didn't... They didn't need it. Well, either that or they didn't really explain it very well, because part of his... part of He says part of why he's going after the Dial of Destiny is like, I need to get that thing to prove my innocence somehow. Yeah. Because, again, at some point he comes back and he needs to go, well, actually... That's also not explained. He comes back at the end of the movie, and you go, "Wait, I thought you had to leave because you were a murderer." How did that solve murder your fake How did murders? that get resolved? Yeah, <laughs> wait. 
Did Marion did we, fix it? We, I don't know. We never Did f- Archimedes fix it? Maybe just the <laughs> act of time travel. No, if he came back to New York, that they would still be like, we need to ask you about all, all these, these murders. guys that you killed. Yeah, all these guys that you school. clearly killed. I mean, on the first ever mass shooting, is does he have any evidence he can present them to go? No, it was actually these Nazis who, by the way, I left back two thousand years in the past. Like, if anything, he's fucked. Oh yeah, that plane, <laughs> the Nazi plane crashed in the year two right. BC. So he has no and physical evidence. And he's an archaeologist, evidence. and he missed that. <laughs> like, how did all of archaeology miss, miss a, a giant B two bomber that crashed in the year zero, but it found a little tiny handheld Neo Geo made by Archimedes? <laughs> Where did it, what happened to that plane? Maybe Archimedes cut up and hit the plane because he knew it would affect the future. <laughs> he kept the Nazis watch though, which is fascinating. Oh yeah, that was dumb. It's all so that was another thing where it's yeah. like it had to hit twice, like when they're when they found. Or we're going to get to that. I don't know. Well, we yeah, just yeah, got... Yeah. All right, so they have... They're going... They, oh, wait, wait. Let me say... It was okay. Tangiers, by the way. Tangiers okay, let me say this. When they're running around Tangiers in the car chase, there's a moment where the woman... What's mm. her name? Shaw? Shaw. Helena Shaw. There's a moment when Helena Shaw decides to be an adventurer mm-hmm. and starts, like, swashbuckling, you know, yeah. jumping on a car and fighting bad guys. And... uh. It wor- It really worked, and all Indiana Jones did was something s- opened a car door, and that made her into an adventurer. No, no, no. All he did was open the car door on the bad guy's car. Something that an old man could do. Yeah. Right. And it helped her out. It helped her do something. But that is the only scene in the whole movie where the action worked. I think. Yeah. Because she was. She. I. Th- I thought she was great. I thought she was a great Indiana Jones. They oh, just yeah. didn't really she was very they fun. just didn't go all in on that. Like if they had her doing action stuff and being smart and Indiana Jones is helping a little bit by opening car doors, like doing old stuff that a movie old man could do. Yeah. It would have worked. You but wanted him, him doing, helping out the younger Indy while doing things that made sense for I would have believed an old it. man. Yeah. An old man doing all this He was punching out everybody. He was punching out Nazis. He was Getting in crazy chases, diving on the water, fighting eels. Bending over. like Yeah, bending without, over without falling down and breaking yeah. his hip. There was no reason for him to have gone to the bottom of the ocean. Well, he had to fight those eels for a dumb sequence that I could barely see because the CG was terrible. Anyway, okay, you were saying. They find the plates. The plates tell them where Archimedes' tomb is. At yeah. first, I thought it was clever that they misled the Nazis and gave them a fake destination, but then there's literally one piece of dialogue where the main Nazi goes, wait, they're heading west, not east. And I go, oh, so that was pointless. They're just going to follow them now. They could have stretched that out a little bit. There could have been <laughs> something them a there. Little bit more you could have shown the Nazis like, oh, my God, you know, somehow we figured out where they're actually going. Whatever. So they all arrive at Archimedes' tomb, and he gets there a little bit early, but yeah. their little buddy, their little little Tyrone, gets kidnapped by the Nazis. So yeah. they now have to uh, get into Archimedes' tomb and find the other half before the Nazis can. Uh, there's a big cave sequence. We have the bugs on the wall. Always fun to see a there bunch of bugs. There was one of the most disturbing deaths, I've murders I've ever seen. The handcuffs? Yeah. What the hell was that? <laughs> I thought he I was. I couldn't believe that that's how the heavy gets dispatched. So there's a guy yeah. that's like gigantic, right? Like seven feet, like he's the heavy. And oh, you're thinking yeah. the whole movie. I can't wait to see Indiana Jones. I can't Jones wait fight till him. Indiana Jones fights the heavy again. I'm thinking about the guy under the plane. There's always like a heavy they guy. Could have had the that, girl fight him. Yes, then, like, that would have been awesome. But instead, instead he handcuffs the little kid, the short round. Yeah. He handcuffs short round. To himself to, himself to keep him to keep the kid from running away, and then they fall into a underground of water, river, an underground kind of river. Thing. Yeah, and then the kid who's a pickpocket has taken the handcuff keys. Yeah, goes through a grate <laughs> where the river underground river goes to. There's right. a hole in a grate. Picks the lock or, or opens the handcuff so he can goes through the grate, and then for no reason <laughs> other than <laughs> pure murder evil. and spite, <laughs> handcuffs the. The big hem- guy <laughs> yeah. onto the grate so that he drowns and <laughs> dies, and, and the last cut of him is him underwater yelling, <laughs> going, <"Bleh!" laughs> spitting all his air out. 
I, I could not believe. And he just goes away like, fuck you. It's like, yeah. bro, you just straight up murdered just, that guy. Yeah, and not even and like. you're like 11 or you're like 12 <laughs> years old. That's true. Did Short Round kill anybody? I don't think no. so. I think the kids. Not in on the, purpose. Yeah, usually the kids in the Indiana Jones franchise are supposed to be like pure. And it's like, oh, they don't have to, you know, murder anyone because they're just along for the adventure. This kid drowns a guy by handcuffing him underwater, which is the most one of the most horrible ways I can think to die. Yeah, I instantly <laughs> felt bad for that guy. I'm like, yeah. dude, that was. They didn't even need to I mean, have. He just wants to go back in time and replace Hitler. You don't right. gotta. You don't gotta drown him. First of all, I thought it was. I couldn't believe that the heavy didn't get a fight against either Indy or Helena. You're right. I, I think should have been the girl. It should have been like that's that's just a classic staple of it. Second of all, you can also just write that scene where the guy drowns without the kid handcuffing him. He could just get trapped in some rocks or something. Yeah. The kid doesn't have to be directly responsible for his death. And, it doesn't add anything. To and, and it also is like so you had the wherewithal to. You saw Steal the, the grate, key. and your yeah. first thought was, I'm going to slip out of this and go through there, but I'm also I'm going also to gonna... spin around in the current <laughs> and handcuff him to that. Yeah, and make sure he drowns to death in a remote cave. I don't in the think you're a the... good guy anymore Even, if you're you... doing that stuff. <laughs> There's, I think you have to, as a writer, go, look, we all hate Nazis. We all want to kill Nazis. I don't want to hold a Nazi. I don't want to handcuff Nazis in the water to have them drown. I, yeah. That's just, just shoot him in the fucking head at that point would have been better. Like, at least it's quick. Jesus Christ. Uh, they have a little bit of a, what do you call it? They were doing a little bit of the opening of Ark of the Covenant, the, the temple scene. Yeah. Where they're in a weird, mystical, trap-filled thing. The traps were very video gamey too, and uninspired. You like, need to displace this water with enough. You need to put uh, broken columns. Yeah. Like, okay, so you have to like press X to move the column. I think that's into literally a puzzle in the new Zelda game. <laughs> Archimedes was fascinated by water displacement. It wasn't like themed, like soul searching, like in Indiana Jones three. Yeah, like only the penitent man, but the penitent pen, pen, man kneels before God, and then it's like, yeah, chainsaws. Wow, cool. Instead, it was push rocks into the water. Yeah, it didn't feel yeah, as okay. mystical and exciting. But they find Archimedes' tomb. He has the second half of the dial, which of course is taken by the Nazis, who now have to use it to fly into a time portal in the sky. Uh, Indy is brought along for some reason. Now, wait a minute, reason. wait a minute. When they find yeah. Archimedes' tomb, mm -hmm. the tomb has a dragon with propellers on it. Right. And they say, well, that's weird, right? Right. And then also, Archimedes has a wristwatch. And I said, well, that's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but they are foreshadowing what is about to happen. A little bit more than foreshadowing. Uh, well, the, the, the dragon with the propellers would have been enough. Yeah. So at, least, at least it's like a little bit Nostradamus-y where you can say, oh, wow, intriguing, right? right. When they show a wristwatch on, it's like, oh, okay, so he's been in time traveling. Like <laughs> well, it, is, it ends up being clever because I did not p piece together that they were going to specifically travel back in time and meet but Archimedes. It doesn't matter at that point. It's like, well, you got... Time traveling Archimedes. That's the move. That's more interesting than any of this crap. That, well, um, I think what happened. I thought it was interesting. Now, first of all, Indiana Jones gets brought along on the plane for no reason whatsoever. That was a, yeah, yeah. So like, the Nazis are flying through into the time portal, right? And they and then, say tie him, bring him, and tie, tie him up, and bring him along. Yeah, tie him up and bring him along. I don't know, just to gloat. Fine. You know what? It's a Hollywood device. Why not? Phoebe uh, Waller, whatever. Uh, Helena Shaw gets inside the wheel well, and then her little buddy, for no reason, flies his own plane. Uh, as well. And he's never flown a plane before. No, but there's some foreshadowing earlier where he's playing around with fake plane. Where he built a goofy plane. He built a goofy fake the... plane out of paper. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, whatever. It sets it up. So, and I thought this was kind of clever, is that Indiana Jones sees a bunch of luggage like shifting apart and he goes, hold on a second. Uh, Archimedes did not know about continental drift. Whatever mathematic equations he made to find time portals did not account for the fact that, you know, the continents are moving and therefore, which, but why would that affect time portals in I thought that was the worst part of the movie. Why would that affect time portals in the sky? The sky. Yeah. Now that I think about it, is that clever or not? I'm not sure. I, that was, uh, when he said that, I thought he was joking to try and trick yeah, them. Yeah, I thought, it, I honestly thought it might have been a trick too. And then when the Nazis at the last minute, panicked and said he's he's right yeah we got to turn like, around wait, how is he right but we're being pulled into the portal the point is whatever calculations archimedes made were based on what the math looked like two thousand years ago 
and now because something continental related to drift. continental drift, this this, co- this constellations change a lot. Maybe that, yeah, something. I don't know about the continents, though, in 2,000 years. You could have maybe explained that a little better. Point is, instead of going back to Germany 1939, as they expected. As the plan was. And they're all dressed up, looking dope. Oh, dude, I was all... happy to see the Nazi shit when we it came out. We real like... Nazi uniforms. All right. Thank God. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you're allowed to do that as long as you beat them up. That's the, that's the rule. Yeah. Uh, instead, they travel back, yes, to the time of Archimedes. It is the battle between the Romans Sycamore. Oh, what battle is that? The Battle of Sycamore? Battle of Sycamore, yeah. Is that where the Romans got their ships lit on fire by Archimedes' mighty mirrors? Yeah. We didn't get a shot of that, though. They the didn't even talk about it in the movie. We no. saw the mirror, but I was they like, show me show the mirror it. lighting the ship. <laughs> you got to show that at least once. Or they should have aimed the mirror up at the planes and like set the planes on fire. That would have been cool. They fly through the time portal and for some reason fly... All the way down to the ship level, so the ships can shoot them with, with arrows. harpoons and yeah. So arrows. the crazy proud boy can shoot them, can <laughs> scream and shoot them with machine guns, and nobody says, "Bro, you're gonna really screw you're up really the timeline." You're really gonna screw line up time one hundred. Yeah, if you're trying to bring back the Nazis, machine you can't guys. just machine gun a bunch of Roman soldiers. And the best part is, you're right. He never explains you it. Just hit Hitler's ancestors. Yeah, like, exactly. That's it. <laughs> that's a very good point. You could end so many uh, timelines by doing that. It's kind of impossible that you wouldn't have messed up the future. Which again is point. why I wish they had fleshed out that character more. Like I know he's a loose cannon. He kills whoever he sees, but I want to know his motivation. Like. Is he just the kind of guy that he sees a bunch of Roman soldiers? He goes, well, I guess I'll just open fire with my machine gun for no reason, even though it's screaming. not going to help this situation at all. I thought he was some kind of history buff, and he was, like, attacking some, like, that there was some kind of comparison between the Third Reich and, like, the First Reich. Yeah. And he was, he was fighting trying to enemies help of the First Reich, but the they really Romans. should have said, yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I think if you get sent through a time portal and you're 2,000 years back in time, you don't go... Well, it's just time to grab blasting. my machine gun and start Danny blasting. Danny DeVito, so I start <laughs> blasting. I'm like, I don't see how that solves the situation you're in. I would just go to the pilots and be like, hey, let's figure out a solution. Do you guys want me to use the guns? Would that help in Can any way? you guys way? fly up? Yeah. Like, out of the reach of their... I kind of have to admire arrows. a guy who goes, I think I'm just fucked and I'm trapped back in time, so yeah, I might as well just kill a bunch of people. Yeah. Which again leads us to our big uh, scene where Indiana Jones, uh, they jump out of the plane, the Nazis all die, Archimedes rides up. Archimedes <laughs> instantly <laughs> what? knows what's happening. <laughs> and he, they shove the, the worst shot ever. Yeah. Uh, and It I- feels like that sequence was kind of rushed. The whole uh, Archimedes back yeah, in time. It's stupid. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're shooting and they're like, "We got to get through this. This is well." I the, did. The longer we look at this, the dumber it is. I got to be real. The only real emotional beat that I felt, weirdly, was that you do get the feeling that like Indiana Jones for him meeting Archimedes would be like the only thing that he's ever cared about. He spent his whole life chasing these artifacts and like the shadows of these great men. And it's like, oh my God, I'm actually meeting Archimedes. Like, I want to stay here forever. Yeah, but every movie teaches him, in every movie, he learns that that's not true, that it's family. <laughs> well, he's a people. stubborn moron. <laughs> uh, yeah. I did like and, uh, seeing even, just he- his reaction to Archimedes, where he's like, this is incredible. This is what I've. It's kind of like he spent his whole life. For this moment, and meeting Archimedes is like the culmination. But is Archimedes like the most? Well, that's the thing. Significant it historical would have been, person. It, it would be Jesus. It should have been Jesus Christ. Oh, you can't. Is have that him, too much? You can't have him meet Jesus. That goes <laughs> wow, a little too what far. That? What's he gonna do? Is he gonna go? Hey, listen. If anyone tries to that Judas guy over there, you gotta keep an eye on him. Okay, I'm gonna go. Uh, no, you can't meet <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I wanted somebody to, to call back. I wanted Belloc to pop out of something and go, hey, remember when I said, who knows, Indiana Jones, perhaps you'll be discovered in a thousand years. You'll be worth something. Remember that? And here you are <laughs> 2,000 years ago. Exactly. And you're going to be, like, I really wanted that payoff. And you're going to be memorialized by time. Uh, you d- you are right that he, it would have, I don't know, would it have been a more powerful moment if he goes, Listen, meeting Archimedes is great. You know, this is the greatest thing. But, you know, what really matters, I got to get back to my own time. I got to well, help this she girl get been back. Shot. To t- yeah. She should have been shot and knocked out, and he would have had to sacrifice remaining in the past to bring her back to the present. Like, that's 
Yeah. That's the normal Indiana Jones. Where he goes, I wish I could point. stay, but I got to, you know, save this girl. And the only way I can do it is to bring her back to the present, get her some real medicine. Get her some insulin. Yeah. She's got diabetes from going through the time portal. Well, that's the other thing. It's like, it's weird because he's been shot in this moment in the, when he's met, Ar- met Archimedes. And she says to him with movie logic, she says, if you stay here, you're going to die. You're, you're just going to bleed out. Like, they'll give you some leeches and shit, but it's not going to matter. And you're just going to die in a couple months anyway. Was so Hippocrates not around? At that? I don't know what medicine they had, but she's she laid it out. The the screenwriter to, the writer told us very directly: if Andy and Jones stays here, he will die. Which honestly undercuts that whole situation because then you're like, well, then there is no choice. Like obviously, he has to go back to the future. Yeah, so he just wants to die. Right. I don't. I really don't like heroes choosing to die. He was choosing to die, and the reason he didn't was because a lady punched him in the face. And that's a really weird ending. (laughs) (laughs) Which then brings him back to the future. And I got really, I kind of got hopeful for a second. So going into this movie, I knew that his son was dead. But then as the movie was going along and it was time travel stuff, I went, oh, it's going to be one of those things where the time travel has shifted things just enough that he's going to oh, wake his son's up. son's alive. I thought he was honestly going to wake up in the apartment and that, you like know. Back to the Future. Yeah, Marion was going to be there and she was going to go, what do you want for breakfast? And he's like, yeah. Marion, you're back. And then he gets a call and it's like, hey, Dad. Yeah, I flunked out of the Army. It turns out they don't I like I just got back from space. <laughs> yeah. I was on Apollo 12. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I thought the time stream. I'm going to go on Apollo 13. He goes, here we go again. I mean, is that me being a big pussy that I'm just like, just give Indy the life I feel he deserves as the big hero? Well, they kind of did that. Like well, he they got back, back together with Marion for no reason, and then the girl becomes his daughter, basically. Kind of. I just think when you kill off a man's son for no, because that sucked though. Like I'm, I'm glad he was dead. But he could have just been living like in a different part of the universe. I'm just personally glad that that character is dead <laughs> because I hated him so much. That stupid <laughs> greaser. Like I'm too dumb to live. <laughs> Shit. I didn't hate Mutt Williams as I get why people hate him, but I still. I, I, Hollywood just seems like weirdly cynical where they're like, I don't know. Like, does a, do, do you have to kill? Is it taking his marriage away temporarily? Isn't that enough? Does he really have to have a dead kid? That's how it should end. It feels Take like the marriage away. Yeah, then he's happy. He goes back and he gives him Archimedes and says, give this to Indiana Jones. A really hot. Say, don't marry Marion. Yeah. A really hot 20-year-old blonde should have walked in and went, oh, Professor Jones, Allison Duty. thanks for letting me stay over. He's like, oh, right. We really fixed the timeline now. Hoo. They should have made it more Back to the Future too, like Biff Tannen yeah. changing history on purpose. I think they could have done something where history had been changed. I, I think it was missing that thing where it's like, listen, you changed history just enough yeah. by doing this that something if interesting happened. you're going to meet happens. Archimedes, why not? Yeah. If you're selling the idea that Archimedes made a time machine <laughs> and that he's ga- galloping out on a horse. Right. The point is Indiana Jones comes back and for some reason his wife, who he was previously in the midst of divorcing, is now like, hey, I heard you went on a big dumb adventure and for some reason that fixes our relationship problems. Yeah. She says, I heard you're back. So I guess that... Helena Shaw called her up and she went, hey, remember how your husband was a lame sack of shit? I made him travel through time and, and he get abandoned shot me. and he abandoned me. So now I'm pretty degrees. sure he's going to be a great husband again. He, what did he learn? What what was his arc? How good of a husband do you have to be at 80? <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Why is she divorcing him at that point in time, especially in the 70s? It's like, just stay together. Be miserable together. Uh, I, guess, I guess what what did he learn or grow or change to? Because the did idea he get over his son, no, no, he didn't. Archimedes really. didn't even give him any wisdom. Like right. they both say, Arch- they both tell Archimedes to his face that he's like the greatest and smartest man ever, and then he doesn't say anything particularly <laughs> smart. <laughs> he's just kind of, yeah, like the Brotherhood of the Cruciform Sword guy said a lot smart of cool, stuff. interesting, smart stuff. There's no for the for the moral of the movie being see look at all the growth that he did now he can get back together with his wife I'm like he didn't really he just kind of went back to do it I guess the moral was that he had to go back to being Indiana Jones again and being because he fun. got knocked out it's because he was fun and adventurous again kind of and that's enough to get his wife back otherwise he was just being sad and lame about his kid <laughs> so the moral is if your kid dies you should just go on more adventures <laughs> to help forget about him. <laughs> I'm that's pretty sure it? Rick and Morty says that's not the way you no, do it. No, that's the exact opposite. You got to deal with that shit. 
It's literally, no, he went on a fun adventure, so now he's going to be fun again, and you guys can have a relationship. Yeah. He did not really deal with his son's death, which is, uh, again, I would have just shortcutted it and have him get a call from his kid going, yeah, hey, I got, yeah, you, you know what? You have you have the ultimate uh, plan there is be like, oh, it's the moon landing. Like, they come back right before the moon landing. And he goes, I don't want to watch that. And they go, you don't want to watch your, your kid son land, land on, on the, the moon? moon? <laughs> and you show Shia LaBeouf <laughs> on the fucking lunar land? That would have been way better. That would have been a fantastic No, no, ending. no, no. Because there's still got to be some some uh, explanation for that the artifact didn't really work. Right? Like, they're, that's when I think, Indiana Jones yeah. goes off the rocker is when it's obvious that the artifact is magical. They've got to keep it a little bit... Maybe it's not actually, you know, maybe something else You're right. happened. It doesn't make sense. How would Archimedes have built a dial that specifically always brings people back to where he is? Yeah. So it has to be that continental drift explanation, I guess. Well, I think. I figured that out very quickly. We're gonna, I'm going to have to, you know what? Honestly, I would have to rewatch the movie. Because, yes, was it magic? That seemed like Dan Brownie when he said, oh, wait, continental drift. <laughs> <laughs> it, it made sense to me in the moment. So does that mean that... Time portals are like all over the place. Was there? Yeah, I think I think the idea is it said that it gives you the longitude and latitude of the time portal. So, so was not there only another it, time portal that was over there that was not drifted? I think the the idea is that if you wanted to if you wanted to go back to like Hitler nineteen forty time, yeah, you would have to wait for a time portal like two weeks from now. Right. The point is that they. But then went, I found a time portal, and but it goes somewhere else. It goes so somewhere else because it's portal? too early. So the other time portal is It depends there. on just, which day it is. It's just it's like a time zone it's thing. It's like each day a different time portal opens and it leads to a different point. That's and it, dumb. it always opens in a different part of the globe and the only way to find it and know where it's going is to use this magic device. Like legend. But the magic device no longer knows where it's going it's not because of continental drift. For the year that we're in. I don't fucking know. Archimedes didn't see that one coming. No, I don't I, look. I'm making a time machine that only functions in the year that you build it in or thereabouts. It's it doesn't a, work it's a if it's- a time machine finding device. It is not a time machine onto itself. At the end of the day, I'll say this. Look, a lot of people said this movie was going to be the worst thing that ever happened to Indiana Jones. It's not. Nah, it's not. It's it's fine. I would. Uh, if somebody asked me, should I watch the new Indiana Jones? I'd say, you don't got to run out to the theater. Nah, I didn't get, I didn't get like long. the feels. It, yeah, it's a little too long. There's too much Indiana Jones. May, yeah, that's part of it. he's so old. He can't. Do I just wanted a movie of just that train, that opening train sequence with the de aging stuff was really fun. I had yeah, a lot of fun that with that. Yeah, that was good. So there's there's more. some good parts. The movie is again two and a half hours long. It doesn't need to be. You did not need to watch Indiana Jones fight eels underwater. <laughs> it contributed nothing <laughs> of value to the plot. Yeah, uh, but I, I again we I like the time travel device. I like that setup. We like the new lady, Indiana Jones. She's fun. She's cheeky. How would you rank the Indiana Jones movies? And where? Well, where would this go between four and two, I guess? Well, one and two are the... Well, three is good. Yeah. Nothing's going to live up to those original three. They're like, we're hit at a perfect point in time. I think that's the problem is like Indiana Jones was great when it was, you know, just a young guy running around. Old Indiana Jones is always going to be like, oh, Harrison Ford's going to die pretty soon, huh? That's sad. Like the adventure is kind of stripped out of it at that point. Yeah, he doesn't sound like he's having a good time no. at all. <laughs> Ever. So it's better than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but in terms of like, I don't know, just the fun and the adventure of he's it all. He's not even excited that we went to the moon. Like, no. Not at all. It's like, doesn't even care. Exactly. Again, why kind do of you a give nihilist, me the, actually. Why are these movies, again, I think it worked in Logan where I'm like, yeah, Wolverine's like a, you know, By the way, angry guy. It Indiana makes sense. Jones knows that God exists. He should be very happy. He should be happy about a lot of stuff. <laughs> Yeah. He knows that Jesus <laughs> Christ walked among uh, us and was the literal son a of God. Grail. Yeah. And yes, and that guys can live forever and that they're ha he's seen an old man happy to die right. with this knowledge. He should be thrilled. Well, it's yeah, just, that's I guess when your kid dies, you can go, well, at least I know he's heaven. living forever with <laughs> Jesus and I have literal proof of it that yeah. I have witnessed firsthand. You're right. It does kind of all fall apart when you look at it through that lens. Yeah. Which is kind of why the third one should have been the last one. Once you as a character 
discovered the existence, the existence of, of God. God. <laughs> there's no other way for be your a preacher. Yeah, there's no other way for your character to grow at that point. It's not like, oh, I got to go back to my day job. It's like, it doesn't matter. You know, God is real. So he should be teaching younger characters, like imparting them this yeah. wisdom and being like secure in his personhood. But he's just a no, bitter he's so alcoholic. Miserable for no reason. Um, yeah, you really have to divorce yourself from the fact that he proved the existence of God. It really, if you want to destroy, I want to sit him down and have a talk. Like, bro, what are you so upset about? Like, what? I guess he just forgot about it. You needed a scene in the third one where, like, at the end of it, he like goes forgets or something. Because yeah. that really, your character has reached the pinnacle of their arc. <laughs> That's literally there's nowhere for a character to go once they confirm the existence of and talk to God. You know what? I'm glad. Okay, I'm glad we didn't see a scene where old Indiana Jones goes back in time and meets young Indiana Jones. That's I good. I was dreading that before we went in. I'm glad we didn't get any Sean Connery deep fakes. That would have been bad. I would have liked a Sean Connery in the sky like Mufasa. Yeah, okay. talking down. I I don't want them, that. You know? I Angie, wanted- you got to go back to the the present day of 1969. You got to shave Indy. all these people, Indy. Let it go. <laughs> right? I, and, oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? I want the Shia LaBeouf cut. I want one scene. Show him having an argument. If you're going to talk about he had an argument or he wasn't nice to his son, just show it to me. I know Mutt Williams is out there. I will always defend Mutt Williams. What was he, have like a mechanic or something? Yeah, he was a greaser. He fixed uh, motorcycles. Why did he go to Vietnam? Did he get drafted? Well, he said because he argued with his... I guess he wanted to prove something to his dad or something. Did that happen in Vietnam? People proved stuff to their parents? Yeah, I guess, right? <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think... Uh, anyway, if I had to give this movie a score out of 10, I would give it like a 7.5. It's like I could take it or I could leave it. It's definitely better than a lot of movies. It's definitely better than it could have been. Let's put it that way. It's something to watch. Yeah, but I, I don't see myself. A lot better. Do you see yourself watching this again? No. Yeah, and that's the problem. Like that Spider Verse movie, I came out of it and I go, I got to watch that again. That was fantastic the whole way through. Uh, yeah. I felt emotions for the characters. I felt, I didn't feel a deep connection to Indy. I didn't feel a deep connection to Helena. I was just kind of like, well, this is fun. Because they're just being like, they're doing jokes and negotiating and yeah. quips the whole time. And the action is so cartoonish that I go, I don't believe. And the funny thing is the action is so cartoonish in Spider-Man, but at least with that, I'm like, yeah, but like that's his character. It's yeah, like, I don't they know. have conversations, though, between. There needed to be more scenes. Honestly, with the runtime of this movie, I'm like, why were there not more scenes that like slowed it down and just had them talk to each other? Oh, and I Sala like the movie is was a cab driver that. in New yeah. York. <laughs> I thought he was dead. I thought that actor was dead. I don't know if that's the same actor. I thought he was dead, too, when you brought it up. So then why did they have... So Shia LaBeouf is alive. They kill him. <laughs> Sala is dead in real life, and they have him I don't for know. basically I don't know no if... reason. I thought the actor died, but I'm not sure. That was depressing, too. Like he... Sala had it made in Egypt. Yeah. But then they, they well, imported him. Well, now it's the him. American dream. He's a... Uh... Drive a cab? Yeah, to drive a cab and be forgotten and not get to go on the adventure anymore. The other thing that I... Um, he was played by John Riz davies who so is still, still alive. alive. Yeah, I still alive. He was dead. Um, Fantastic. He also asks her why she wants that dial, and she just says, cash. And I'm like, you know, like, did you guys not remember Fortune and Glory? Like, am mm. I the only one here who gives a shit about the rules or what? What, where you can get glory along with finding the things? That's what his whole motivation is for in Indiana Jones 2. Short round goes, why do you want to find this, Dr. Jones? He goes, Fortune don't and do, Glory, don't kid. Do voice. That's what he said. <laughs> Fortune and Glory. And then he asked her, why do you want to find it? And I'm like, oh, here we go. They, could even, say they could play yeah. the same music and go, Fortune and Glory. And Fortune she goes, and Glory. Cash. Cash. <laughs> I'll say this, a lot of people out there are going to say that Indiana Jones was destroyed by some sort of feminist agenda, that he's being replaced by a female character. No, there was uh, no. He should have been. That would have been a good he movie. He should have been, honestly. If anything, they did less of that than they should have. Yeah. Uh, but that's going to be the standard line out there. If anything, I think this movie suffers from it's too long, it's a bit bloated with some stupid action sequences, uh, and that I, you know, I didn't feel a great emotion. I think they, they needed more emotional beats to connect us to these characters. Yeah. And I felt like it was missing that. I think that, um, <clears throat> I've read probably all the Indiana Jones books. Wow. Some of them are real. They I had, would imagine they're not all great. When they started them, they gave a guy who really loved airplanes. Mm. 
the he he wrote the, the first the books. like five. Yeah. And it's just like endless descriptions of the planes <laughs> that he's on. Great. Um but then they gave it to a real screenwriter and he wrote some good ones. I would put this movie in between some of those. It's one of the good Indiana Jones books. Yeah. Cool. It could have been a lot better, but it wasn't. So uh it does make me want to go play some of those old Indiana Jones games I missed out on. It's like I like all the like indie adventures. He's yeah. a great character. I just I don't know. It's one of those characters where you go, is this how you want it to end? Okay. I like that I hated in the last one that they get made his son like the opposite of him mm-hmm. and stupid. And, and in this least... movie they just make a female version of him. Yes. That's yeah. what I want to see. Yeah. I don't want like, oh, they're so they're the original they're so- odd couple. <laughs> He's smart, Brainiac. Which the original odd couple was the third one, was him and his dad, and that was way better. Yes. Yeah. That was yeah. fun. And he's become his dad. Even the way he taught was, you yeah. could see that he's he was grumpy just old so man. depressed. Right. And cynical about his own students. So I guess the movie is Indiana Jones finds his groove, gets his groove back. That's the movie. He and should then retire. He, his, he should retire, and he needs to d- actually deal with the death of his son. You can't just... Go, well, I went on a fun adventure, honey. I guess I'm good now. When did they invent Prozac? <sighs> not not in the 70s. Not soon enough. Not soon enough. Okay. Well, this has been our review yeah. of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Would you give it a score out of 10? Mm, I don't I don't think you need to you go just, see it. Okay. You don't got to see it. It's going to be on watch it It's going to be video. on Disney Plus in like 3 months. You shouldn't be subscribing to that either though. Well, I'll just pirate it then. Pirate it. Get it on yeah. Plex. I, if you're not, if you if you want to, if you got nothing, you got to, nothing do, to do, go, go see, see it. it. It's not bad. It's good. It's just yeah. like not great. It's not great. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, if uh, you guys like this video, don't forget to leave a comment. Hit that like button. Don't forget that my comic book super killer. By the time you watch this, I think there's like a day left to get it on Indiegogo. So you got Ooh. one day to go pick that up. And if you liked uh, me and Dick arguing with each other, you need to watch our podcast. Yeah. The biggest problem in the universe available on YouTube. Biggest problem that show. Check it out. It's a lot more heated than this. It is a lot more. Well, this time <laughs> we kind of agree. Maybe we'll find a movie we don't agree on. If you'd like more movie reviews from us, let us know. I think this is a fun format. I'd like to do more. Sure. Of it. Yeah. You like talking about scripts. Yeah, and we plot. should have done this for the Spider-Man movie. We should have. That to be continued was well such bullshit. Maybe we'll do it for another movie. We'll, we'll get to it. It was we not do bullshit. It for the third one. They, the whole movie was great. The Spider-Man movie. They needed to do a to be continued. Uh, they need more time for the next uh, one. Okay. We'll figure it out. Guys, right. Indiana Jones, Dial of Destiny. Uh, see it if you want to see it. We can't tell you what to do. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourself. Bye. And uh, bye. Bring back Mutt Williams. R.I.P. Why are you? Mutt. You can't just kill him. He sucks, though. It doesn't matter. Just write him. Just have him doing something else. Dying. Having him being an astronaut would have been, like, brilliant. That would have. That's actually smart. Should have made him a, oh, he's in jail. Dude, if he replaced. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> he's in jail. I don't. Honestly, Ooh, that would have been cool. Scandalous. That would have been cool, too. I would have been fine with that. All right.